everyone, I'm Anna, Cinephile host. Today I will talk about the movie Eat, Pray, Love, an adaptation of Elizabeth Gilbert's best-selling memoir of the same name. The one and only Julia Roberts plays Elizabeth Gilbert. This film is one woman's year-long attempt to find great food and spiritual self-actualization. Let's watch Eat, Pray, Love and follow our main character as she travels around the planet to Italy, India and Indonesia to experience life as she thinks it should be lived, with adventure, personal enlightenment and freedom. I have this for you. Keep grounded so it's like you have four legs. That way you can stay in this world. Also, no looking Edward through your head. Look through your heart instead. That way, you will know God. Which is why you came here, no? See you later, alligator. Liz is a successful writer who enjoys, along with her husband, a New York lifestyle that many people dream of. But after many years of what her acquaintances consider a great marriage, she finds herself wishing she were not married. Hadn't I wanted this? I had actively participated in every moment of the creation of this life. So why didn't I see myself in any of it? The only thing more impossible and staying was leaving. She asks for a divorce, believing that her husband will agree to this and that they will part as friends. To her surprise, this does not happen. Her husband is against parting. The divorce proceedings drag on and send Liz into a long depression, which makes her question her self-worth. In the middle of her depression, she meets and falls in love with an actor named David. He's performing in a stage adaptation of a short story Gilbert wrote, and she feels they were made for one another. She has never been so much in love. She soon discovers, though, that the timing of the affair is all wrong. She leans on David too much to ease the depression that her divorce has caused. David is like a drug, she says. He makes her feel so good that she becomes addicted to him. The more he gives her, the more she wants and needs him. The relationship between Gilbert and David eventually collapses, which wounds her again for a short period of time. Finally, she decides that she has to do something for herself. For her plan to return to mental and physical health, Liz divides the next year into three sections each section four months long. For the first four months, she devotes herself to simple pleasures. This corresponds to the eat portion of her story. She flies to Rome, where she surrenders to physical pleasures, such as tasting the great food and drink that only Italy can offer. She tries her hand at learning Italian and even flirts with some of the local men whose romantic language <laughs> soothes her aching heart. Eating and speaking Italian are what Liz loves about her stay in Italy. Her favorite word is attraversiamo, let's cross over, which Italian friends say to each other when they want to cross the street. Attraversiamo. Oh, what a beautiful word. With her friend Sophie, she goes to Naples and eats the best pizza ever. But at the end of the fourth month, she finds that she is still haunted by depression. So she continues forward with her plan. Maybe my life hasn't been so chaotic. It's just the world that is, and the only real trap is getting attached to any of it. Ruin is a gift. Ruin is the road to transformation. Her next stop is a sacred ashram, or temple, in India, where, under the guidance of a wise guru, she explores her spiritual side. Gilbert's work assignment at the ashram is to scrub the temple floors several hours each day. This work is hard, but she finds the hours of meditation she must do much more difficult. At the ashram, Liz meets Texas? Richard yeah, from Texas. He nicknames her groceries because sure she eats so much, 
and gives her down-to-earth advice throughout their time together. You have to learn to select your thoughts the same way that you select your clothes every day. Now that's a power that you can cultivate. If you want to come here and you want to control your life so bad, work on the mind. And that's the only thing you should be trying to control. Because if you can't master your thoughts, you're in trouble forever. I am trying. That's, yeah, hello, that's a damn problem. Stop trying, surrender. Go out into the garden and just sit there and still your mind and watch what happens. Why don't you just let it be? Another friend Liz makes at the ashram is a 17-year-old girl named Tulsi. Tulsi dreads turning 18 because she will be expected to marry. She doesn't want to get married and admires Liz for being strong enough to leave her husband. As Gilbert's time at the ashram ends, she feels she has achieved her purpose in coming there. For the third part of the story, the one that corresponds to love, Liz travels to Bali, Indonesia. There she reunites with a medicine man named Ketut, whom she met during her previous trip to Bali for a magazine assignment. Ketut teaches Liz simple Balinese meditation, sit and smile, and encourages her to keep up her Indian spiritual practices as they spend hours discussing life. Not so easily. Smile with face, smile with mind, even smile in liver. See you later, alligator. When Liz gets hit by a car while riding her bike, she shows it to Ketut. His surprising response is that she should go to a doctor. So she goes to a storefront she has seen in town called Traditional Balinese Healing Center. That's where she meets a woman named Wayan, who becomes a very close friend. Liz even organizes an international effort to raise funds to build Wayan and her young daughter a home. One day, a Brazilian friend of Wayan comes to the shop. She invites Gilbert to a party that night where there will be many expats. Gilbert agrees to go. At the party, she sees the man who hit her with the car earlier. He's Brazilian and his name is Felipe. He later gives her a ride home and over time they fall in love. As her trip comes to an end, Felipe suggests they could have a life together between New York and Bali. Liz is afraid to get hurt again. Ketut convinces her that sometimes to find balance in life you have to be willing to be unbalanced by love. Sometimes to lose balance for love is part of living balanced life. Renewed by Ketut's words, she declares her love for Felipe and they sail off into the Bali sunset. Attraversiamo. It means let's cross over. Keep grounded so it's like you have four legs. That way you can stay in this world. Also, no looking outward through your head. Look through your heart instead. That way you will know God. I had actively participated in every moment of the creation of this life. So why didn't I see myself in any of it? The only thing more impossible than staying was leaving. Maybe my life hasn't been so chaotic, it's just the world that is, and the only real trap is getting attached to any of it. Ruin is a gift. Ruin is the road to transformation. Sometimes to lose balance for love is part of living balanced life. Eat, Pray, Love is ultimately charming and inspirational. It will likely leave you contemplating your life choices 
and forgiving your flaws. Liz was a woman who had it all, a loving husband, a great apartment, successful career, but sometimes one realizes too little too late that they haven't gotten what they truly wanted in life. But it's never too late to explore the world and seek out your true destiny. I'm your host, Anna, and I hope you enjoyed today's episode. You can find more on Funday website. See you next time.